Um, we're now going to talk about a song called Esquire. And the way this went down is I told Randy a story um, about a lawyer that's the slimiest lawyer I've ever had to deal with. I mean, this guy's bad news. This guy's got the morals of a, I don't know. I don't want to get it. No. I'll leave that alone. Anyway, immediately Randy knew what he wanted to write about. Now, I had this, the, the song, I had the intro. There's basically the intro, it starts right with a chord, chord. Uh, da, 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 that's the melody. And chord, chord, da, 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 da. And then, I don't know how it went from there, but when Randy and I were together when this song was written, so we got into the, the body of the song, finished all the melody, and um, got, I, we got it in one night, I think, and then Rand went and wrote the lyric. And what do you say about that? Yeah, well, again, going back to the writing part, just one thing about when Jay and I write, especially when we write uh, in the same place, uh, usually, uh, when we, especially when we're right here around uh, his grand piano, he's got this great piano. And he'll play a little bit, and he'll sing a little bit, and, and then it's like musical chairs. Suddenly I'll say, well, check this out, and he'll get up, I'll sit down, and I'll play it right. and then he'll get up, I'll get up, and he'll scoot back in, well, what about if we do this? And that goes on, it goes on until we, until we get the fish into the boat, so to speak. And the thing is, Jay, uh, quite often when I'm work, working with somebody, or if I have a, an issue myself, it really bothers me, or the uh, co-writer has an issue, or, or, or he's, you know, like he was talking about this lawyer, and uh, and so I, there was such good raw energy there, and that I just kind of harnessed it, and it makes my job easier because if I if I have a good premise like that, plus some real genuine emotion to go behind it. That can carry all the way through the writing of the song, the making of the record. Uh, you know, every step of the way, that energy is available. You know, whatever we feel about that, we just tap into that. And you know, there are a lot of songs uh, that Jay and I've written together for Jar and, and other things that, that are based on some thing, some person, some event, whatever that uh, bothers us or whatever. And then it, it sort of, as a catharsis, the song carries that energy and, well and, and gets it out of our system, you know. It's a great lyric on that song, but there's so many, <laughs> so many great well, lines. Well, you know, I, I've known a few lawyers that... Uh, you know, we could fall into the category. You could put that same joke. <laughs> not every lawyer's that way. No, of course not. We, we have, have some, lawyers... We have some angelic lawyers. We really do. Well, yeah. Uh, totally right. Of course. One eight hundred Justify his fees. Hide your pets, lock your windows and doors, or, or pack a bag and push the gas to the floor. One bite from his fangs, and the next thing you know, you'll be sending him checks forevermore. Okay. Um, by the way, um, Randy plays all the keyboard solos. Randy is the keyboard player in the band. Uh, I play a little keyboard here and there, but it's not, very little. Well, Randy played a harmonica, a synth harmonica sample solo yeah. on this record and just really nailed it with the pitch band wheel. And I was just telling Randy before we started doing the interview stuff here that on the next JAR album, on JAR 3, we've already done, we're, work, we're mixing JAR 2 now, on Jar 3, we had to revisit using that kind of a thing here and there a little bit. Okay, one last thing on Esquire and we can move on. The transition from the body of the song to the end is very interesting. Um, we're using upright bass for the body of the song and drums with brushes like a jazz drummer set. And then right when it gets to the end of the song, the, the, the drums kind of stop for a minute and just play little time, or I can't remember exactly what happened. Kind of a cross sticky. Is that what it was? Yeah, first the so. brush. Yeah, yeah. First the brush. Yeah. So he's just playing like he's still playing his jazz kit with the snare 
uh, backbeats played in a brush. And then the bass needed to change from acoustic bass to electric bass. And that had to, do very, it had to be done very subtly. I don't remember what I did in the mix to make it subtle, but whatever it is, you really don't hardly notice it. And then the, so the snare goes from brush to cross stick to full snare. And this whole buildup happens, and oh, the regular high, the regular drum set high end has to creep in. The jazz set leaves slowly, and it be, and then the the pop set comes in, mm -hmm. and this whole transition is smooth as silk. And then it just goes blazing, and I play a guitar solo over the end, and it's just like all energy is the hell's broken loose. Very cool, something we're proud of that we could pull it off that way and make it happen. And yeah. that's it for Esquire. Thank you.